It is who you really are when you recognize your true identity as God's own imagination pushed out into this world. Everything I share tonight comes from my own experience and deep understanding of the law that governs all being. Let us begin with the first mistake. And I ask you to listen not just with your physical ears, but with your spiritual understanding. For what I'm about to share transcends mere intellectual comprehension. Mistake number one, living from memory instead of imagination. The first and perhaps most devastating mistake that kills your confidence is living from memory rather than imagination. You see, my dear friends, memory is dead imagination. It is the shadow of past experiences that you continue to give life to through your attention and verbal. Many of you sit here tonight bound by the chains of your past experiences. Every morning you wake up and immediately recall past failures, past embarrassments, past rejections. You replay these memories like a worn out record. And in doing so, you deny the very power that God gave you, the power of imagination. Let me share with you a story that perfectly illustrates this principle. A dear friend of mine in Barbados, a man who once could barely speak in public due to paralyzing fear, discovered this profound truth. He had lived his entire life from memory, allowing each past failure to define his present moment. Every time he stood before an audience, his mind would flood with memories of past embarrassments, past stutters, past moments of anxiety. But one day, through the application of this law I'm sharing with you tonight, he made a revolutionary discovery. He realized that his memories had no power over his present moment unless he gave them that power. He began to live from imagination instead of memory. Every night before sleep, he would imagine himself speaking with complete confidence and authority. He would feel the satisfaction of expressing himself freely, feel the joy of connecting with others without fear. He would imagine the warmth of applause, the smiles of appreciation, the feeling of absolute mastery over his communication. And I tell you tonight with absolute certainty that within weeks, his entire world transformed. Why? Because he chose to live from imagination rather than memory. He understood that imagination is God's gift to man. It is the very essence of reality, while memory is but a shadow of what once was. You see, when you live from memory, you are denying the creative power that is your birthright. You are choosing to be bound by what was rather than embracing what could be. This is the first and most fundamental mistake that kills your confidence. Mistake number two, misunderstanding the true nature of confidence. Now let us move to the second critical mistake, one that keeps countless souls trapped in limitation, misunderstanding the true nature of confidence. This mistake is so prevalent that it has become accepted as truth in our modern world. You believe confidence is something to be achieved, something to be gained through external accomplishments. You think when I get that promotion, then I'll be confident. When I lose extra pounds, then I'll feel worthy. When I achieve this goal, then I'll stand tall. My dear friends, this is a complete misunderstanding of the nature of confidence. Confidence is not something you get. It is something you allow. It is your natural state when you recognize who you really are. You are God's own imagination pushed out into this world. How can the imagination of God lack confidence? It is impossible. Let me share with you a profound experience that was shared with me by a young lady in New York. She had accomplished everything society told her would bring confidence, multiple degrees, a prestigious career, financial success, social recognition. Yet she felt hollow inside, constantly seeking the next achievement that would finally make her feel confident. One day she came to me in tears, asking why, despite all her accomplishments, she still felt insecure. I shared with her what I'm sharing with you tonight that she was seeking confidence from the outside in when it can only flow from the inside out. I taught her to realize that confidence is not the result of what you do. Rather, what you do is the result of the state of consciousness you occupy. When she began to live from this truth, her entire world transformed, not because she achieved more, but because she finally recognized who she really was. Mistake number three, rejecting your present self. The third mistake, and this is crucial to understand, is the continuous rejection of your present self. This mistake is particularly insidious because it often masquerades as self-improvement or spiritual seeking. 
Many of you sit here tonight in a state of constant self-rejection, always pushing your acceptance of self into some imagined future. You tell yourself, I would accept myself when I will feel confident when, but I tell you, this is a fundamental denial of your divine nature. Remember the words from scripture, I am that I am, not I will be, or I was, but I am. This is the name of God, and it is your name too, for you are one with God. When you reject your present self, you reject the I am within you. I recall a gentleman who came to me in Los Angeles, completely defeated by this very mistake. He had spent years rejecting his present self, always living for some future moment when he would finally feel worthy of confidence. His life was a constant postponement of self-acceptance. I shared with him a principle that transformed his life. The only time you can accept yourself is now at all. The only time you can feel confident is now. The only time you can recognize your divine nature is now all. He began to practice this truth. And within months, his entire life transformed. Not because he became someone different, but because he finally accepted who he already was. Mistake number four, misusing your inner dialogue. Let us move to the fourth mistake, which is perhaps the most pervasive of all. The misuse of your inner dialogue. Your inner conversation, my dear friends, is your destiny externalized. Every moment of every day, you are carrying on a conversation with yourself. And this conversation is creating your world. Most of you are engaged in constant self-defeating inner dialogue. You wake up and your first thought is, I'm not ready for this day. You face a challenge and immediately think, I can't handle this. You meet someone successful and think, I'm not at their level. These inner conversations are not mere thoughts, they are prayers, and they are always answered. Your inner dialogue is the spirit moving upon the face of the waters of your consciousness, creating your world. Let me share with you a principle that has transformed countless lives. Your inner dialogue is not just other mental chatter. It is the very substance from which your world is formed. When you change your inner dialogue, you change your world. I knew a man in New York who transformed his entire life by simply changing his inner conversation. Instead of his habitual, I can't, he began to live from I am. Instead of I'm not good enough, he lived from I am more than enough. He persisted in this new inner dialogue until it became natural and his outer world rearranged itself to match his new inner conversation. Mistake number five, seeking permission to be confident. The fifth mistake that many of you are making is seeking permission to be confident. This mistake stems from a fundamental misunderstanding of your true nature and your relationship with the world around you. You look to others for validation, for permission to stand in your own power. You seek approval from friends, family, colleagues, even strangers before allowing yourself to feel confident. This, my dear friends, is a complete denial of your divine nature. You need no one's permission to be who you are. You need no one's approval to stand in your power. The very fact that you can imagine being confident means that confidence is your natural state. For how can you imagine what you are not capable of being? I remember a young teacher who came to me, constantly seeking approval from her colleagues, her principal, her students' parents. She lived in a constant state of seeking permission to be confident in her role. I shared with her this truth. The only permission she needed was her own. I told her to imagine herself as the confident teacher she wished to be, not to seek it, not to ask for it, but to assume it, to live from it. And as she began to live from this assumption, her entire classroom transformed. Why? Because she stopped seeking permission and started giving herself permission to be who she really was. Mistake number six, confusing confidence with arrogance. Now let us address the sixth mistake one that keeps many spiritual seekers trapped in limitation, the confusion between confidence and arrogance. This misconception has caused countless souls to deny their divine confidence for fear of appearing arrogant. True confidence, my dear friends, is the most natural and humble state of being. It is simply the recognition of who you really are. God's own imagination pushed out into this world. Arrogance, on the other hand, comes from ego and insecurity. When you are truly confident, you have no need to prove anything to anyone. You have no need to compete, to compare, to belittle others to feel better about yourself. True confidence is as natural as breathing, as humble as a flower blooming in the garden. 
I knew a businessman who struggled with this very issue. He feared that by fully embracing his confidence, he would become one of those arrogant executives he despised. But as he began to understand this law, he realized that true confidence had nothing to do with superiority and everything to do with authenticity. He learned to live from the state of natural confidence and his entire business transformed. His relationships improved, his decisions became more effective, and most importantly, he found a peace he had never known before. Mistake number seven, living in the future instead of the now. The seventh mistake is one that plagues nearly everyone in this room, living in the future instead of the now. This mistake is particularly deceptive because it often masquerades as goal setting or ambition. You think I'll be confident when I achieve this goal or I'll feel worthy when I reach that milestone. But I tell you tonight, there's a complete denial of the power that is yours no though. The only time you can be confident is no do. The only time you can feel worthy is no low. The only time you can exercise your imagination is now though. When you push confidence into the future, you push it out of your experience entirely. Remember the words of scripture before Abraham was, I am. Not I will be, but I am. This is the eternal no dough in which all power exists. When you live in the future, you deny yourself access to this power. I recall a young actor who came to me, always pushing his confidence into some future moment. When I get this role, he would say, then I'll feel confident. I taught him what I'm teaching you now to live from the end, to imagine the feeling of being confident now, regardless of external circumstances. As he began to live from this truth, his entire career transformed, not because he became someone different in the future, but because he chose to be confident in O'Dar. Mistake eight, denying your divine nature. And now we come to the eighth and final mistake, the one that underlies all others, the denial of your divine nature. This mistake is the root cause of all lack of confidence, all feelings of unworthiness, all self-doubt. You see, my dear friends, you are not merely human beings seeking a spiritual experience. You are spiritual beings having a human experience. When you deny your divine nature, you deny the very source of all confidence. Every time you say, I can't, you deny your divine nature. Every time you shrink from a challenge, you deny your divine nature. Every time you see confidence outside yourself, you deny your divine nature. I want to share with you a profound truth that was revealed to me through years of studying scripture and testing this law. Your imagination is God operating in you. Therefore, when you imagine yourself as confident, you are not engaging in mere positive thinking. You are aligning with your true nature. The solution, living from the end. Now that we have identified these eight mistakes, what is the solution? The solution, my dear friends, is to live from the end. To imagine the feeling of being confident now, now, regardless of external circumstances. Every night before you sleep, imagine yourself as the confident being you wish to be. Feel it as real. Feel the satisfaction of expressing yourself freely. Feel the joy of standing in your power. Feel the peace that comes from knowing who you really are. This is not mere visualization or positive thinking. This is the actual substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When you imagine with feeling you are creating reality, the practice of the law. Let me give you a practical application of this law. Tonight, when you go to bed, imagine a scene that implies you are now the confident person you wish to be. Make it a short, simple scene that you can repeat easily. Perhaps it's someone congratulating you on your confidence. Perhaps it's you feeling completely at ease in a situation that used to cause anxiety. Whatever scene you choose, ensure it implies that you are now confident. Repeat this scene until it feels natural, until it feels more real than your current circumstances. Fall asleep in this feeling. For in sleep, your subconscious mind accepts as real what you have impressed upon it. The promise of transformation. I promise you, if you will apply this law, if you will persist in living from the end, your world will transform. For this is not mere positive thinking or psychology. This is the law by which worlds are created. Remember, confidence is not something you get. It is something you allow. It is your natural state when you recognize who you really are. You are God's own imagination pushed out into this world. 
How can the imagination of God lack confidence? The living proof. Let me share with you one final story that perfectly illustrates this principle. A young woman came to me several years ago, completely lacking in confidence. She had tried everything, self-help books, therapy, workshops, but nothing had worked. I shared with her what I'm sharing with you tonight. I taught her to live from the end, to imagine herself as the confident being she wished to be. Every night before sleep, she would imagine scenes implying she was now confident and self-assured. At first it felt mechanical, even false, but she persisted. Night after night, she would fall asleep feeling the satisfaction of being confident. And gradually something remarkable began to happen. Her world began to reshape itself to match her assumption. Opportunities appeared that allowed her to express her newfound confidence. People began to respond to her differently. She found herself speaking up in meetings, sharing her ideas freely, connecting with others effortlessly, not because she had become someone different, but because she had finally recognized who she really was. The final understanding. My dear friends, I have shared with you tonight the eight mistakes that are killing your confidence, but more importantly, I have shared with you the solution. The solution is not in doing, but in being. Not in achieving, but in assuming. Not in becoming, but in recognizing who you already are. Test this law. Apply what I have shared with you tonight. Imagine yourself as the confident being you wish to be. Feel it as real. Live from that assumption. For I tell you with absolute certainty what you imagine with feeling while in a state into sleep must objectify itself in your world. The promise fulfilled. Let me conclude with this final thought. The transformation you seek is not in the future. It is in your imagination and oh, The confidence you desire is not something to be achieved. It is something to be assumed now. Remember, you are not working towards confidence. You are working from confidence. You are not trying to become confident. You are acknowledging the confidence that is already yours by divine right. Go forth tonight and apply this law. Leave from the assumption of being confident nowadays. For I tell you truly, the world has no choice but to reshape itself to match your assumption. This is the law, and the law never fails. The world is yourself pushed out. Therefore, as you assume the feeling of confidence, the world must reflect back to you that same confidence. This is not magic or mysticism. This is the law by which all things are created. Remember, my dear friends, that every moment of every day, you are either living from memory or living from imagination. Choose imagination. Choose to live from the end. Choose to recognize your divine nature. For in doing so, you will discover that the confidence you seek has been within you all along, waiting only for your recognition and acceptance. Thank you, and good night.